Does anybody have a question? Hold on. Yes. Yes. Do you all hear a question? Um, I don't know how anything else would feel because it's just me. You know, so I don't know what it's like to not have that. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's hard for me to say, people say, what's it like, like, what's it like living in Washington? I don't know. I've lived there my entire life. It's like, it's like waking up. <laughs> but what I can say is this. Music kicked my ass. Like as a child, it just, it was so clear to me from the very beginning. When I was a very little kid, I became obsessed with a, um, this song, uh, I think it's called, may someone correct me, I think it's called Last Date by um, Kramer. Uh, what's his name? Somebody Kramer. He's a keyboard guy. Floyd Kramer. Floyd Kramer, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Last Date, is that the right song title? I think it is. And I listened to this song over and over. I was probably two or three years old, four years, somewhere in there. I couldn't stop listening to it. And then, like, when I heard about the, I heard the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and Janis Joplin and Jimi Hendrix, and I just, I couldn't believe this universe. And it just was so clear to me. And I remember at one point, like, talking to my sister and saying, God, you know, Jimi Hendrix, like, you can hear, you can hear, like, this, the, how sad the guitar is. You, that's stupid. You know, music doesn't have emotions. And I was like, you are wrong. And, um, um, <laughs> and then, you know, when I was, I think I really wanted to play, I wanted to be in bands um, really badly early on. And I had played piano, like a kid, I taught myself how to play piano, and I had taken lessons, and that made me hate the piano. So I stopped playing piano. But I really wanted to play guitar, and I had no idea. Like, you know, playing a piano and playing guitar are really different. They're totally different like structures, and I couldn't make, I couldn't transpose anything. And my mother actually ended up um, hiring a neighborhood bully to teach me how to play guitar, which was really smart on her part because she stopped beating the shit out of me. And um, the um, his name was Nicky Bazanka, and he's a good guy, but he's a tough guy. And I bought a, like a guitar from a yard sale for four dollars. It had like the strings that far off the neck, and, and he didn't really. I mean, he could play guitar, but he was no guitar teacher. Um, all we managed to do in the one ten dollar lesson I had was um, smoke on the water, kind of. Um, and then I quit. I just gave up. Like I just thought this is impossible. Um, to play music, like music is the province of the Blue Bloods, right? Like Peter Frampton, Jim Page, and all those kind of, the, it just seemed like those people, they're like, it's like royalty, and you had to be of a different class, uh, a class of which I was not a part of. And so I thought, all right, I'll just listen to music. Um, and then I was a skateboarder, which was super important because skateboarding really helped me learn how to redefine the world around me. Like when you're on a skateboard, you don't, like you don't just see streets, you see surfaces, you don't see, swimming pools are not just for swimming anymore. You know, like everything, you just learn how to redefine everything and you, the world becomes, a, like it, it's just a perspective, a different perspective, a good practice, because then punk came along um, and that just blew my mind. Because it was this moment where I thought, this I can do. This is not, not because it was simple, but because it was free. I'm not talking about free money. It was free, libera like liberating. It was free. The whole point of punk was like the new idea. And anybody could do it. So when I got into punk, that's when I was like, wow, I'm fully on board. This is 1979. I saw the cramps. February of 1979, completely blew my mind. Um, most incredible show. And actually, I, 
I remember before the show, it was in this hall at Georgetown University, and I went to the bathroom, and I was taking a piss, and the drummer of the Cramps, right, Nick Knox, comes and takes a piss in the next urinal. That was terrifying. <laughs> because up to that point, I had seen my first show ever, not punk, first show ever, Queen and Thin Lizzy. <laughs> Good show, but Freddie was not pissing in the next urinal. <laughs> I saw Queen again, then I saw Ted Nugent three times. <laughs> you can laugh, but Nugent was incredible. His live shows were amazing. Guy wore a loincloth. Um, <laughs> first person I ever saw cuss on stage, that was insane. I saw Van Halen opening for Ted Nugent, one of their first tours. And I remember uh, we got there and there was a, these kids holding a sheet. And on the sheet they spray painted Van Halen. And we're like, fuck you, Nugent kicks ass. But they actually were really, really, um, they were good. He didn't look too good that night. Um, but none of those people ever shared a bathroom with me, ever. But this guy, Nick Knox, was in the bathroom. And he was scary looking. The whole thing was scary. And when something is scary, I usually think that's making my mind work. That's telling me there's more to it. It's not that it's scary because I'm going to get hurt. It's scary because it's engaging parts of my brain that haven't actually had that, haven't been massaged yet. 